Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. This is my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So this week, I painted up some more Warhammer 40,000 stuff for my Ultramarines army to expand my um, my Indominus star set to about 1,500 points. It's more than that now, but it's got too many heroes and, you know, the usual, like, force organization problems. Um, and I painted up my first star set for Warcaster, the new sci-fi um, sort of, like, miniature tabletop skirmish game from Privateer Press, set in a far future sort of, like, vision of, I guess it's not really the Iron Kingdoms, it's like the Iron Universe almost, um, with Warjacks and all, all new sort of like factions and stuff. I'm painting up the Iron Star Alliance for some games against Epic Duck Mike. Um, and then I got some stuff on the way too. Uh, I got some plans for building and painting up uh, a new little like combat patrol force for some Crusades, because I don't know if you just noticed, but I put up two reviews today um, for two new books uh, for 40K for 9th edition for narrative play and for match play. Uh, I got some stuff uh, for my Ultramarines to continue on that journey. I, I bought a I bought a Space Marine tank. This is the first Space Marine tank I've bought in uh, six or seven years, probably. Um, and it's the first Primaris tank I'm gonna be building, period. So buckle up, guys. I'm gonna be salty and unhappy because I hate painting big miniatures, <laughs> says the guy that painted like five Imperial Knights. Um, and I managed to get my hands on some new Primaris Intercessors because I want another Intercessor squad, of course, to go uh, with the one I painted this week. So I have a third troop choice and I'm not just like cramming in two in Space Marines again. I'll kind of flack for it. <laughs> like that I, I try to do everything right. I like, I'll, I'll just play down like 15 points. That'll cover whatever that point cost will be. <laughs> and I don't even think people watch battle reports sometimes. They just, they just like to just tell us we're doing it wrong. Even when we start the battle report with like, we're going to do some things wrong and try some things out. Um, so hopefully that'll solve these problems. I'll just I'll just use intercessors until the new codex comes out. Uh, and then I'm stoked. I got some more stuff for Bot Wars from Traders Galaxy um, for my Atlanticans and um, my Valiants. And uh, also, um, actually, um, Anthony sent along some stuff for Epic Duck Mike to finish off his infects infector infectors infestors infe infectors. Infectors. Uh, <laughs> I mix those up constantly. Um, so you'll see more of that on the channel soon. Mike's gonna paint up some more robots uh, and sort of like Saturday morning cartoon stuff, and I'll be I'll be playing him coming up. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at what got done and what is coming up. So here is my painted pal for this week, and once again, we're gonna try this in iPhone Vision. You guys seem to really like actually just the the macro sort of like um, abilities of the iPhone 11. So we're gonna we're gonna see if you guys like seeing it this way now. I'm trying this with my um, like my earbuds in to see if that like helps the audio a bit and keeps it sounding a little less tinny. And I'm doing it in the studio with the studio lighting. So here's the first 12 models I painted this week. Um, I did up a Intercessor Squad to go with my Indominus Crusade starter set for 9th edition 40k. Um, and I converted up a Sergeant with a Thunderhammer. People keep asking where this Thunderhammer is from. It's just a plain Jane old plastic Thunderhammer from the old plastic Terminator frame, the Assault Terminator frame. Um, and I just basically hacked off uh, the sergeant arm that's pointing from the intercessors and hacked off this terminator arm and stuck them together. <laughs> and then uh, I did up nine guys in um, bolt rifles and one with a AGL. Uh, just as like another troop choice to go with my assault intercessors. And then I'm going to do a third one, a third box of these two, probably with another Thunderhammer sergeant because it seems legit. Uh, people kept asking why I never convert anything, and I'm like, I do convert things. It's just like they're space marines. <laughs> it's it's a little. Uh, I painted up a big old ironclad. I am not like I don't love the Redemptor class dreadnoughts. I like the old dreadnought pattern. I I don't know. I just I I like them better. So I painted up an ironclad because I think he's super cool and he's good in melee. And I had one, and I had a 60 mil base. So. He got painted up. He's got some Forge World um, purity seals and stuff on him and a Forge World etch piece. This guy was originally supposed to go in my Red Scorpions army that I got rid of. And, uh, yeah, he just had his Red Scorpion bits, like, pulled off and then painted up as an Ultramarine. Uh, and then, finally, I did up a Librarian, Primaris Librarian, and I did him, uh, like, the thing with the, the Ultramarines is literally they're in the color, normally, of the Librarius. So I did the Librarius, like, the normal sort of, like, way. Um, and that way his shoulder pad looks slightly different. Like I used the, I just painted some gloss black over top and then hit it with some of the, um, cobalt blue from green stuff world. And that, uh, that made him like stand apart from the rest of his battle brothers there. Um, and then his cloak was done up in Rakarth flush, I think, blend up to white and the usual other like details other than the rest of the Marines with Viking gold from scale 75. Uh, yeah, reminder for those who want to know, it is Green Stuff World Cobalt Blue Overgloss Black Primer 
um, for the armor, and that's edged with Stormhost Silver. The bases are done Eshin Gray, and then washed with... Oh, God, I always forget the name. Whatever Vermin Fur is now, red-brown, uh, mixed one-third water, one-third gloss varnish, or gloss medium, and one-third... Uh, I'm just going to call it Vermin Brown because that's what it was called for like 25 years. <laughs> I don't know. Is it Gorther Brown maybe? I don't know. Uh, and then Dry Rushed with Eshin Gray um, just mixed up with like some Celestial Gray, some like some sort of like blue-white uh, to give it like that hard edges. And then just the base rooms are painted black. So it's super quick and dirty, but I love the look of it. And it makes the models pop off the bases really nicely. And so there it is. There's my uh, 12 models for Ultramarines done iPhone style. I hope you liked it uh, for this week. And then I painted up my first starter set for Warcaster. We've got the Iron Star Alliance. Um, these are uh, the sort of like, I don't know. I like this style the most. It, it has a sort of um, a Destiny look to it. And I was in the paint and space marines mode where I was doing like up from metallics. So I airbrushed these fellas. This is from Private Your Press, by the way. Uh, with Grey Knight Steel, I think. It's like a blue steely color. And then base coated all their clothing with like a dark, dark gray. Washed it all with Nano Gloss, um, and then started picking out the details, which are all in like orange and black and stuff. And I think I used Fire Dragon, or maybe Wild. Oh, actually, I think it was uh, Wild Rider Red. Um, blended up through Old Sunburst Yellow for all the the oranges and stuff like that, and then just highlighted all their their little details, like their necklaces and their pouches and stuff. Um, so this is a Paladin Enforcer Squad, and this is like the starter set amount. So you have two solos. Uh, a Warjack and a, sorry, three solos, a Warjack and a, um, a unit. I'll be playing some of this with Epic uh, Duck Mike today. And, and basically we're trying at the star set, the skirmish scale or whatever. Um, and you activate a solo plus something every time you activate. So like I could have like the, the commander and the firebrand go, or like the weaver and the paladin enforcers go. So you have a paladin, um, weaver who's like a kind of a mage or like a, a caster sort of the Paladin Commander, the Paladin Squad. This is an assassin uh, whose rules are like in like the extra rules right now. And this is a Firebrand Warjack with a Fusion Blade and a Repulsor Shield and like a cool like Ion Cannon-y thing on his shoulder. And what's cool is you actually customize your Warjacks in this. So like, I, obviously all I have right now is a Star Set Bits, but in the future, when you build a Firebrand, he's got five like Warjack hard points that you can fill with whatever arms you want. So you can like mix and match your arms. So I think it's a really like that's such a great idea. Like one of the things people like in giant robot games, being able to customize a giant robots. So hooray, private your press, let us customize our giant robots. I'm excited to get like more bits for this stuff and eventually like build this into a, the, like the full game size force where I can, you know, I, I don't know if I, cause he's metal. I don't know if I would magnetize him, but I can at least have the choice of like designing my own robots as I go forward. They're super fun to paint, big chunky sculpts. Um, they have that same sort of like, Iron Kingdom's aesthetic, but like mixed with like a sort of post-apocalyptic sci-fi Destiny vibe. Um, I have another starter set for the Marcher Worlds that I'm gonna paint up soon. Um, but for now, this is my this is my first like we're gonna give it a go because uh, Mike has like uh, like I just have these models that were like preview models. And Mike has like actual starter sets with like tokens and all the cool janks. So he's gonna come over today and we're gonna we're gonna give it a give it a go college try and you'll be able to see that come up soon. All right, so here's some stuff coming up. We've got my Repulsor Battle Tank. I'm probably gonna build this one as like the Super Bang Bang Tank, which means um, lots and lots of shots. No lasers, all bullets, uh, and we'll see how that do. But I think I can make this thing spit out like 30 something dice every turn. Uh, so we're going with all rotary cannons. I'm kind of st I'm kind of stoked for that. And like little missile bots and stuff too. So I'm excited. I'm gonna build it probably in three sections. So like hull, turret, and then plates at the bottom, and that way I can airbrush the hull and the turret. Um, my uh, my usual um, what's it? The uh, cobalt blue, and then do the the track like not tracks, but like repulsor units, whoever they are, in like a, a separate airbrushing sort of pile as the uh, the metallics. And I'll just speed things up, and then it's just details and tanks honestly don't take that long to paint if you don't do like if you glue them shut one which is a hundred percent happening i am not doing the interior on this thing the time where i had opening up tanks is long since past um i i did many a land raider that way and i'm not doing it anymore and then yeah the uh, intercessors back here are going to get done up um just another bolter squad probably and i'll give them a, a same sort of outfit so an agl and then a sergeant with a thunder hammer which i'll convert from the terminators again but probably doing like a different pose so i'm stoked about that uh, and that's gonna add I mean it'll take me to 2000 because like the like the repulsor by itself is a it's a land raider as a transport like it doesn't need a slot so it's like 300 something points 
And that's another 215 points for 200, and, yeah, 215, because it's 15 for Thunder Hammer, and 200 for 10 more Intercessors. So, like, we're looking at 500 points right there, plus characters. So, I probably won't play 2001 games, because I just, I just find they grind. Like, even 1500 point games take a long time to play, and I'm just not, like... That's not my wargaming these days. I like to I like to play snappier snappier systems with not a gajillion gajillion dice rolls, um, but it gives me some options for like smaller point games. And then speaking of smaller point games, what we're gonna do it? We're gonna make a combat patrol. I'm probably gonna paint my Solomon Lock to go with this, um, so I can have an Inquisitor leading it because I feel like the combat patrol games are the most narratively driven. And then I'll get to play some of this Nexus Rift stuff. I think we're gonna we're gonna do that like idea I have, which, which if you watch the review today, you'll you'll hear it, where like we just roll up, basically we, we decide we're going to play X number of missions, four missions maybe, we decide we're going to do two from this point level, one from this point level, and then we, we roll up um, the the actual like missions, and then we decide what order they're going to be in and what narratively makes the most sense, we build a little story out of it. So I think that's going to be awesome uh, for a little supplement, and it means that I can play some combat patrol games, which I've wanted to do for a while now. And this is almost exactly 25 power level, which I think is I'm stoked for. Uh, it's 20 because it's seven, ten. Mm, I think you're three, like 13, 14, 17. I think 21, 22, and then my Inquisitor, which is like two or three. Um, which take me like 25 and then I can play as like the, the Inquisitor picks the ones that seem the least affected by the rift to go to investigating and I'll paint up my Solomon Locke who I just a miniature I love I've wanted to paint for a while and for story missions I think Solomon Locke like is not just as, as Solomon Locke but like a taking an Inquisitor makes the most sense for like trying to investigate the the big pylons and stuff in the the, the Nexus I haven't picked a, a order for them though so yeah share it in the comments what color should I do these guys I'm gonna airbrush them all one color so I need to know what the color that's gonna be we're doing some bot wars. We got some valiants. Uh, I'm stoked. So we've got um, broadsword here, and then uh, short stride, forge fire, and cadmia. And one of these, I think it's oh, I can't remember which one it is. Not uh, not forge fire. I think actually it might be broadsword. I gotta, I gotta flip them over his packaging. One of these is the one that like can host other. Yeah, it's this one actually. It's broadsword. Can host other um, bots. So there's like a, another little bot called Capacitor who like pop out and like go and fight with him, which is super cool. And then for the Atlanticans, I've got Octo, Hydro, and Necton, which finishes my, um, it's like two more fly guys and then the centerpiece for building this. Dude, Leviathan, oh my god, look at how big Leviathan is. It's bonkers. It's so huge. I'm so stoked to paint this giant robot. Um, and it's on like a giant base too. Like, look, at how, look at how big that base is. It's going to be so cool. So it's it's another big guy for um, my Valiants, which gives me lots of options. Some more like like cool like standard dudes like Short Stride, Forge Fire, and Cadmia. Um, some of the upgrade dudes who are like hosted. And then I have like a big baddie to play against too. Uh, and then for the Infectors, uh, Mike's got some really cool stuff too. He's got the Queen, which is another huge model. Uh, and just more infectors to give him like the the options for like an 80 point game. So you're on the, on the paint table, done and on the books. I painted another 19 models this week for two different games, which I'm kind of amped about. Uh, and lots of projects on the go coming up. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you next week to see what I got done. Until then, Ash, have a gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.